The burner for my oil-fired boiler was tripping out on safety, and after some troubleshooting, I determined that this burner control was faulty. This is a Beckett 7505, and the way this works is when there's a call for heat, 120 volt AC power is applied to these terminals. The controller first goes through a 15 second time period that's meant to establish airflow within the system, and in this time period, it sends power to the igniter terminals as well as motor terminals. The igniter is a high voltage transformer that produces an arc for igniting the oil mist, and the motor powers both a blower that blows air into the flame as well as a oil pump. But no oil will flow until a solenoid valve is opened. So there's also a cadmium sulfide cell that connects to these terminals and that acts as a safety feature. This is what it looks like and this acts as a flame detector. So after that 15 second period as long as this cadmium sulfide cell is not detecting light, meaning there is no flame, it will go ahead and open um, the solenoid valve to allow the uh, system to ignite. Um, if this does detect light before that time period, this will trip out on safety and shut everything down. After the solenoid valve opens, it goes, the controller goes through a trial for ignition period, which usually lasts about 10 seconds. And after this 10 second period, the cadmium sulfide cell checks to make sure that there is a flame. And as long as this is detecting light, it will shut off the ignition and allow the boiler or the burner rather to run until it hits the high limit, at which point, um, at least in this system, power would shut off and everything would, would then be powered off. In some systems, this uh, connector here or that this bridge would be uh, not be present and power would always be applied to the L1 and L2 terminals and this limit would only be powered when there's a call for heat and once that call for heat um, reaches the, the high limit this would shut off but power would still be present at these terminals and what would happen is the valve would close but the motor would continue to run for some time period and um, this this allows for a, what's called a post purge where the blower is just pushing out air without the the flame um, present and this cleans out the system gets rid of all the exhaust from inside the uh, boiler and chimney so the issue I was having is this would get a call for heat, power would get applied to these terminals, and the igniter and motor would both run properly, but after that 15 second initial period, this valve would never open, this would just trip out on safety, at which point everything shuts off and a red light starts blinking on here. I did check the cadmium sulfide cell to make sure that it was working properly, and I did ultimately replace this uh, controller and everything is working as it should. So I know that the problem is something with this controller. So my thought is that it might be a problem with the circuitry um, for the cadmium sulfide cell. It, it might be overly sensitive, um, thinking that uh, there's a flame present when there shouldn't be. So that's the first place I'm, I'm thinking to look. This is what the cadmium sulfide cell looks like in one of these burners. The threshold is usually around 1.6 kilo ohms, where if the resistance is below that value, it's determined that there is a flame present, and if the resistance is above, then that would indicate no flame is present. So if we look at the resistance on this, when it's dark, we're in the hundreds of kilo ohms up to mega ohms. And if I expose this to even just a little bit of light, we can see that it drops down into the hundreds of ohms. If I stick it right up to the light, we're dropping even down to about 20 ohms. So after prying the plastic cover apart, as well as prying the PC board out of the case and removing this jumper wire, um, in some cases there's a thermostat which would attach across here, we can get to the PC board. So there's some sort of conformal goop covering up everything on the top here, but uh, the back isn't actually showing any conformal coating. 
I have this set up for a bench test. Neon indicators are used for the igniter motor and valve, and these yellow jumpers are used on the cadmium sulfide cell. I'll just either open these or short these depending on what the cell should be doing. So again, the original issue I was seeing is that after the 15 second initial startup where the igniter and motor were running, instead of opening the valve, it would trip on safety. And this wasn't something that always happened, but a lot of the times it was happening. So we'll power this up and see if we're getting the same response. All right, so power's on, the igniter and motor are powered, and eventually the valve should close. Right now I've got the CAD cell connections opened, which would indicate that there's no flame. And we'll see if this ignites. Okay, so now the valve closed. I've closed the CAD cell connections, which would indicate that there's a flame present. And now what should happen is the ignition should shut off, but these two should stay on. And instead, everything shut off, and that blinking LED is showing that this tripped on safety. So this is a, a new symptom. This wasn't what I was originally seeing. So let's reset that and see what happens. All right, I'm going to disconnect this because a flame shouldn't be present. We're back, back in that 15 second initial startup. The valve is opened, so I'll close the CAD cell connection. And again, it's tripped out on safety. So it's still tripping on safety, but now it's tripping after the test for flame, as opposed to um, right after that 15 second initial startup. So it's a new symptom, but it's still not working properly. Before moving on any further, I did go ahead and check out the power supply and everything looks fine there. The only regulated part of the power supply is a five volt rail and that happens through this bridge rectifier, this electrolytic capacitor, and U2, which is a 5-volt regulator. I can't read the silk screen on this, but it's definitely a 5-volt regulator because the center connection there goes directly to this 5-volt silk screen, and it reads 5 volts perfectly. So since the power supply is fine, let's move on to looking at the connections for the cadmium sulfide cell which is F1 and F2 right here. Here we can see that F2 connects directly to ground and F1 on this side of the board connects through C13 to ground. And if we flip this over on the opposite side of the board, F1 follows this trace here, which then goes to a via. And if I flip the board back over, that via pops out right here, going to this resistor array R6. So what we have is a resistive divider where five volts is applied over here. It goes through this resistor and the resistor network up through this via to F1, then through the cadmium sulfide cell and then down to ground. This test point, which is in between this resistor and the cadmium sulfide cell, then goes through this resistor to this capacitor to ground and then up through this rightmost resistor down through this trace and if we follow that trace it goes down to U4. U4 is either going to be a microcontroller or some kind of an ASIC. If our issue is with U4 then we're really out of luck because there's no way we're going to be able to uh, replace this part. So hopefully our issue is with either R6, C8, or C13. There is a little bit of kind of white corrosion looking stuff around F1, 
but I did check the resistance between F1 and F2 and it was a, a mega ohm in rising which was just due to the charging of C13. So there doesn't seem to be any issue with that white stuff around the terminal and C13 also seems to be fine. So what we can do now is try to check R6 and the way we'll, we'll do that is we can check the resistance between F1, which connects to this point, and the 5 volt rail. So that would be checking this second left resistor, and that should come out to about 4.7 kilo ohms. So checking that resistance, I'm. I got a few mega ohms and then it rose to infinity. So there seems to be an issue with the resistor network. Let's check another resistor in the network. We'll try checking this leftmost resistor. This trace goes up and connects to the reset button. So I'll test between the one terminal that connects to that resistor on the reset button and the 5 volt rail. And I'm getting 4.7 kilo ohms, which is just right. So the leftmost resistor is fine. The second to the left resistor seems to be open. I've got this back on the bench test setup. I haven't repaired that resistor yet, but this is easy enough to test to see if this is the only issue just by connecting an external 4.7 kilo ohm resistor across the 5 volt rail and terminal F1. So let's turn this on and see if things work better. So we're back on that 15 second delay where the igniter and motor are on. I have the CAD cell connections disconnected. Now we're on the ignition cycle. So I'm going to close these CAD cell connections and that should prove that the flame exists. And if this is working, then the igniter should shut off and the motor and valve should stay on. Nope. It's still shut off, so that resistor doesn't seem to be the only issue. And here we can see we're tripped out on safety. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and test all the resistors in the resistor network. The leftmost one we checked before, and that tested out fine. And we're seeing we get exactly 4.7 kilo ohms, so nothing wrong there. This next resistor is the one that we previously tested open. We can see that it's still measuring open. The one to the right of that is also measuring open. And the one on the far right this one's testing open as well. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all resistors in that resistor network, even the leftmost one, because I think it's pretty likely that that one can fail as well. So I've replaced all the resistors in that resistor network. Now let's give this a try to see if things are working. Power on. We're on the pre-purge cycle where the igniter and motor on, are on. I've got the CAD cell contacts disconnected. Now we're on the test for ignition, so I'm going to close these contacts to indicate that a, f a flame is now present. And success, so the igniter shut off, the motor and the valve are open, and at this point the system would be heating up until it hits the high limit. And in my case, once the high limit is hit, all that happens is the power is shut off. So let's give that another try. This time, instead of just shorting the contacts, I'm gonna put in a 1K resistor, and it should work the same with this 1K. 15 second pre-purge. Well, 
We're on the 10 second trial for ignition, so I'm going to put this 1K resistor in place. And that worked as well. So now let's go ahead and test the safety. We want to make sure that if the flame were to go out, that this will shut off. So I'm going to disconnect the resistor and it shuts off on safety.